Hello, what's up babies? This is Leah Makes Noise. Welcome. I'm an art director, illustrator. I just be doing the most, but today I will just be doing an illustration about colorism within the black community. And so I'm just starting with a few sketches. As you can see, I wasn't sure specifically what my idea was, but I knew I wanted it to be something around black sisterhood, something that could, I don't know, feel empowering, but also, I just hate piece of popcorn. Wow, that was so rude and disrespectful to do on, on mic, but, um, <laughs> but something that's more lighthearted while I talk about something that is a little bit deeper like colorism and specifically my views on colorism as a more light-skinned black woman and i feel like this has been a discussion that's come up a few times within the past few weeks if you follow the shave room or the melanin shave room in any capacity you would know that this is a topic that has come up. It's something I've always wanted to talk about and touch on because like obviously I feel a big responsibility to do so as a light-skinned black woman. So yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. But first largest table that they have available and you will see him for no longer than one and a half hour <laughs> then you're flying home girl or you can stay for a lot of deal if you want to somebody could send you your luggage but like a weekend get it out of your mind it's not happening i said one night but i think no. you, i think you sold it oh, to me now <laughs> no no you're getting on the first plane out of whatever right. major airport is closest to you Right, you may spend one night in Hartsfield, Atlanta, Hartsfield, Jackson. You might spend one night at Fort Lauderdale Airport if you miss your Uber from the CPK. Yes, you may spend one night in whatever city if you don't make your plane. I'm here to let you know the truth. That's it. Oh my God. That was clean enough for me to get started. These are my washi paints. Oh wow, my washi tapes. Stick with me. I got a little bit before recording this, so y'all, I needed to because you know this whole conversation is pretty heavy, and so I needed to feel good and balanced before I hopped on the mic to really start talking about it. But for the art that I should also be talking about, I'm going to be using two gouache paint palettes, my Arta palette, Artiza, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it, but that's the one I've been using for my past few gouache videos. And I finally opened my Hemi Paints palette, which I've been excited to open because I feel like this one, from what I remember when I went through all of them, has the better skin tone range. And I really want for this painting I make to have a good variety of types of melanated skin tones. So because of that, I was like, okay, it's good to... This is a good time to open up this palette and get this one started. Um, and yeah, it's just more like reds and like good oranges and um, colors that lend themselves better for making more melanated skin tones, including purples. So that's why I wanted to open this one. If you look back at a few videos previously, you know that I had opened my other palette and did this same process because it's been really nice to have a pinned up, dried, actual version of what these paints dry to look like. And so I have one of my art sub 
Artiza. I know whoever knows how this is supposed to be pronounced is probably irritated with me right now, but whatever. For right now, it's Artiza. <laughs> it's the Artiza palette. But I have that one swatched out and pinned up above my desk. And now I'm making the swatch to put up for this Hemi palette. Yes, yeah, so these are what the colors looking like. Like I said, I think the colors overall would lend themselves better to the range of skin tones I want to depict. And so just for a comparison, you see what I mean. Like there's more like soft and pastel colors in the Arts of Palette, but this one has more richer skin or richer tones that could help me build out different skin tones. Yeah, they're both pretty. I'm happy I bought two. I thought I was doing too much, but honestly, it was the best plan for me, especially since it ended up being worth it because I actually really love this medium. Um, I was just experimenting before, but I think this is going to be long-term something that I continue on in my art process. So I'm laying it on this washi paint so that I can have borders. I knew I didn't want to do a full page. The one thing I don't like about this paper is that it is so big. So I, I'm going to go look and see if they make like smaller versions of this or something else I could be using for like more um, daily type of painting. Because I want to really lean into painting physically daily too. And if you looked at those sketches earlier, um, that was the one I picked of all the different faces, basically flower women, as, you know, a beautiful bouquet of black mace. <laughs> I just came up with that now. I am brilliant. Okay, so as I'm starting to build into this skin tone, let's get into what this video is about in the first place, colorism. As a black, light-skinned woman, um, I've spent the past pretty much like month overarching past like few years really thinking about this, but like the past month has been extremely salient because, you know, the whole situation with Dan Lay, you know, She's not light skinned, she's not yellow bone, but she's just white, like a white Latina. That's a whole other thing. I don't even have to get into that because I feel like enough people have read her about that. But she released that song. She didn't release it, but she teased a song that was like, yellow bone is what he want. And it was terrible in about 10 different ways to Sunday. We don't even have to go through all the ways in which sonically it was terrible, but in terms of this whole colorism discussion, it was terrible because it was, a, once again, a punching down type of desirability politics, stupid ass colorist um, standpoint of light-skinned women feeling more validated because of lighter skin type of song. And then she, even in her defense of it, had the nerve to be like, well, there's plenty of songs about like darker skinned black women that celebrate them. And it's like, yes, because you know why? Because they literally in every fucking capacity, here, 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 let me, let me backtrack. We all know we live in a white supremacist society. We know, all know that the closer to whiteness you get, the more opportunities, the more advantages, um, basically the more lenient society is going to be on you in a bunch of different ways. Um, and this is not just a, a matter of opinion. There are literally studies on this. There are statistics on this. Like the if you are a lighter skinned black person or the aka the closer you come to whiteness the closer you come to passing this doesn't mean that you aren't black it just means like there are just certain things that you'd get in terms of advantages and privileges that our darker skin counterparts just do not and i i don't understand why the conversation when it whenever colorism is brought up the lighter skin people who will um, cite reasons why colorism goes both ways 
and I'm not saying that it can't I'm just saying like I'm not saying it can't I'm just saying that there is a difference there's a difference between societal advantages and um person-to-person interactions me growing up in Detroit Michigan surrounded by primarily nothing but other black people and me being more light on the lighter skin tone of things I wasn't I was never like the lightest person in the classroom, but I was one of the lighter skinned people. Of course, there was times where I would get teased, where I would get the jokes, I would get bullied. But at the same time, I remember darker skinned people getting bullied. I was, I'm thankful to say I was never one of the people doing the bullying, but I legit remember like a balance. Um, And I think especially once you get to middle school, desirability starts to come into play, especially as a woman. And those, me being like outwardly bullied became less and less basically as I got older because desirability became more of a thing. So of course, as like a lighter skinned black woman, I got teased or whatever. But I think people need to realize that even though your individual experiences are valid and your individual traumas around things are valid, it doesn't mean that societally you aren't getting certain advantages. And it's in ways that honestly, I never realized until I was outside of the framework in which we were all just trying to survive and live in. And I think one thing I think about is One thing I think about a lot is the fact that so many of so many of my like darker skinned friends and even my older sister, who was probably one of the more darker skinned people in my family. My family is like we we are definitely a skin tone range, but my older sister is probably has one of the darker skin tones. And so when I think about like the traumas of even how often we would get complimented, me and my little sister versus her, when people, like we we were all as a unit be in the mall um, shopping and like people would go out of their way to like stop my mom and be like, oh my God, look at them clearly indicated me and my little sister um while ignoring my older sister who was just like standing there um i i remember multiple times that happening in my childhood and so i think like in a lot of ways dark darker skin little girls specifically because i feel like that's the I'm, I think in the rest of this video, I'm just going to be speaking from the perspective of black women, the spectrum of black women, but because, just because the, that's the examples I have. So I don't have any brothers, so I don't really have any like hands on experience with um, what the dynamics of that is, honestly, with boys, but with young girls. I feel like darker skinned young girls have to grow up sooner or have to be um, more aware sooner. We talk about how black children in general have to know the realities of the world, have to be told about like what their race means in society in the world um, earlier than like white kids do, right? Like we talk about how we have to have the talk with our children. But I think there's another conversation to be had about within that within the black community. I feel like the lighter um, black kids are, or the lighter our skin color is, as little girls, I feel like you're almost less susceptible um, earlier to start to really hate yourself, because you know like society is basically setting up black women to hate ourselves and it's not I feel like I had I'm willing to bet that I had less awareness around what my potential future desirability would be or like less anxiety around what that would be um for longer because I 
there was never there was never let me just put it this way there was never a point in my childhood where i felt like i was ugly because of something i couldn't change as a little chubby kid people will be like oh you're so cute and like brown cheeks but oh you know you gotta be careful so you don't grow up fat like i remember hearing shit like that but i don't ever remember feeling like I was ugly for something that I wouldn't be able to change. Like I literally never heard, oh, you're so cute for a little light skinned girl in the way that I know some of my um, friends had to probably hear growing up or my sister had to hear growing up. Um, And so I think that's why I'm saying that it's almost like I got to be more innocent about the way that society would view me or views me a little bit longer than than probably what my counterparts did. And so when I think about, especially with Black women, when they talk about how they will be bullied or the trauma they will have from being lighter skinned and having people like talk about them, it's always the core of that bullying is always wrapped up around desirability. Um, It's always wrapped around like they were jealous of me, therefore they did X, Y, and Z. But there's never like that connection of they were jealous of me because I was lighter skinned because they had an earlier awareness of all the ways in which my lighter skin would eventually advantage me over them would eventually could be weaponized against them i don't think there was ever there's never that connection because again i don't want to say that people's individual experiences around being around being bullied aren't valid they are but at the end of the day girl especially once desirability and i'll say that's like what later middle school to high school when that started to come into play you know that you just had more advantages like there was never i was the nerdiest of nerd nerds and i still never at any point had any worry that had i wanted to i can go and just like swoop a boyfriend Never, never had that worry. Never. Like, I didn't really want to. Like I said, I was the nerdiest of nerds and I was very focused and very hyper scared of like ending up pregnant. Like that was like my biggest worry, like not reaching my potential and ending up pregnant. Not that ending up pregnant equals you can't reach your potential because some of the people who I knew got pregnant in high school are now doing the damn thing right now and i'm very proud of them um but you know as a kid especially while t mom was hot and popping in these streets you just think that automatically is gonna equal struggle and for me i was just like i'm not dating nobody but i remember boys going out of their way to like talk to me and compliment me in ways that like i just i i and this is me speaking frankly. As a light school woman, I could literally always tell when somebody is approaching me on some color of shit. And it was just always completely unattracted to me. But I that wasn't the case for some of the people within my high school. Like, I remember there being, like, basically, like, light-skinned girl cliques. And they were they weren't labeled as that. They weren't, like it wasn't like they were going around with like fucking ribbons on being like oh yeah we're the under melanated but <laughs> i re- i just remember like being like hmm, everybody in that friend group looks exactly the same and they're the ones that guys are always talking about and sometimes some of them try to buddy up to me but You know, I'm just going to stay over here with my crew where we can talk about Harry Potter and art and all these fun things. And it's just weird because it just it just it makes me sad because I know now 
like all the forces outside of ourselves that had so much to do with the dynamics within even just like friend groups within the high school structure. But going back, all of these things are just things that I haven't really picked up on or realized until well out of high school and well out of when I was working within just primarily just like black spaces. It wasn't until, you know, I'm now in more predominantly white spaces within my the city I live in, within the industry I work in. And so these are all things that I realized, um, even within those frameworks, like are still working for me. I know that I'm talented. I know I'm good at what I do. I know I'm smart, all the things. But I also know that I probably had an easier time rising the ranks of advertising just because I'm light skinned. Um, just because people perceive me to be um, probably like biracial in the sense of like having white parent, a white parent. Um, I don't, but <laughs> I think that's the way that I could be perceived. And so I know I'm more likely to be considered less threatening. Um, my talent is more likely to be appreciated. And then when they choose to have diversity, I'm more likely to be the type of person they're gonna be looking for to fulfill that little slot versus um, somebody who, is phenotypically more black. So, and I'm just saying that, like these are things that I didn't like fully grasp or realize until like, again, you're a little bit further in it and you have more perspective and everything. Um, like I, at my portfolio school, I was the only black girl. Um, and so like within that context, like obviously colorism doesn't really mean shit, but colorism does mean shit in terms of who even got into the program in the first place. I feel like this is all very rambly. I probably shouldn't record this two glasses in, but here we are. I'm just, I hope you're following as you're following me painting this painting. And so these are all things that, again, I look around and it's like so few of us and then the few of us that are there all fit within certain archetypes and within the women i would say that there's also a layer of like pretty privilege that's a whole other video because like what is pretty what is pretty privilege in terms of like blackness and um blackness within white spaces there's 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 so many layers like just thinking back to even the stuff i would get away with as a teenager i was always there was never a point where i was made to feel like i was like a bad kid like there was never a point, even, and it didn't matter what I said or did or was going through. There was never a point where anybody in my life made me feel like I was less than. And I, th I think also there was a benefit of growing up in a primarily black community um, that contributed to that, but again, it was the benefit of growing up light-skinned in a primarily black community.
community because I had years, especially in middle school, where I, it was rough. I had a lot going on. I was a lot of trauma that I was dealing through. I didn't know how to talk about some of the abuses I had gone through. And so instead of doing that, I was lashing out emotionally. When I was lashing out, I would be like so disrespectful to some of the teachers. And I'm laughing now. It was just like out of like thinking back, I'm like, damn, that was rude. And I would be that person that would have the classroom rolling. Um, and I would still be considered a, like a good kid. Like I would still get um, responsibilities. I would still be considered smart. I mean, I was still like, you know, doing my work, but even when I didn't, I would always still be given the benefit of doubt. I don't think I was ever sent to detention, even though I would definitely talk back. And I would say that was the case from like seventh grade through ninth, where I was still trying to figure out. Yeah, like I, I just, I look back and I'm like, wow, me and Dom can say the same thing, literally can do the same thing. And the teacher is gonna be like mad, but they won't like actually reprimand me but um don would be sent to like the principal's office <laughs> um I, it's wild when i think back on to it because it's not just whatever the current generation perpetuating it it literally is like the older generation sending us subtle cues of these things like and it's not until, again, I'm older and I'm now looking back with perspective. And I'm just like, wow, we have got to do better. And that's the thing that's actually really inspiring to me that this current generation, I feel like we are holding each other accountable. I feel like us as lighter skinned black women are starting to really grasp and understand that like, yes, there are are so many things that are set up to divide us, but talking about this and acknowledging this and not and standing up for our darker skin, black sisters is important. Um, and so like when people were trying to compare that Danny Lay um, song to Beyonce's Brown Skin Girls, it's like that song literally is written from the perspective of a light-skinned black woman celebrating darker-skinned black women because we know, we see, we have been talking about this. We acknowledge like all the ways in which we are trying to be divided and we also recognize all the ways in which there are struggles that we just do not have to go through and so we're here for you we stand with you and we ain't going to stand for people putting you down in order to quote unquote uplift us and here come danny lay <laughs> the song that is the exact opposite of that and also while not being black so yeah layers layers um and so, yeah, I think I'm constantly thinking about ways in which I can do more because as Angela Davis said, um, us black women or us lighter skinned black women, yeah, we, we are increasingly doing more, but we're still not doing enough. I feel like until the whole white supremacist everything is dismantled then there's still not enough we could be doing but for me artistically i make sure that um i am uplifting other darker skin black femme artists i make sure that uh i'm lending opportunities to them that come to me um but yeah, I'm always trying to think of like, what more could I be doing? What more could I be creating? Um, 
because we're all going through in our own ways but i just know that my sisters are going through more um on top of literally still having to have conversations and stupid ass songs like that pop up every once in a while and there's also the arguments around like oh why are they coming after Danny Lay specifically for that song with so many dudes have songs about it and it's like yeah thank you for bringing it up because more so than her like she's just like a symptom of what people allow specifically men allow um and what they uphold and what they uplift because I'm pretty sure she probably had a bunch of dudes in her corner who listened to that song produced that song with her um who didn't think anything of it who literally like while being black did not think to go hey um so this is disrespectful to my darker skinned black sisters because X, Y, and Z. Like, then, no. Where they were they were gassing her up. And so, like I said, she's just a symptom of a larger issue. Um, which I think could be a whole other video. And that I feel like I haven't really seen enough men talking about because I really want their perspectives on it. The only people I honestly have any trust and hope for anymore are other black films. And that's just, that's honestly where I'm at. Like, I don't have high expectations for anybody else. And the expectations that I have for us is just for us to care about us. That's it. And so that is the very rambly version of this conversation, I'm sorry. Um, but to talk about the art a little bit more, I, again, just wanted to do a piece that showed and depicted the range of Black uh, films, and that just felt fun, like a, a bushel of melanin Blackness, um, and showed our range and our creativity and I don't know. The stuff that made us us. This is, again, probably, I think, the, the third time I'm using this paint. So, again, I'm not completely used to this medium yet. And I really feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it, though. Like, it's really... I really think this came out cute. And I think I'm going to turn it into a sticker. Because I just got a Cricut machine. And so I can now make my own custom stickers. So I think I might turn this into a sticker. And then once my art shop opens in March, you can purchase it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very proud on how this turned out. I also have a second video coming up of the unboxing of my Cricut and of what I did to the other side of this page. Um, you saw a preview of it in the sketch process, but I think that one came out pretty cute too. This might still be my fave, but the other one came out pretty darn cute too. Um, if you want me to expound on certain issues like colorism, like what I was talking about, Please let me know in the comments. I want to get more into it. I feel like I could have did the whole research thing and like expounding on certain things. But I really wanted to just also kind of just speak from the heart. Like what this painting is, is me thinking about black sisterhood from the heart. Um, and hopefully any, all of this makes sense because, like I said, I got a little bit before this. I wasn't prepared. It just hit a little bit harder than I was expecting in school. Um, but I'm just hoping that this still makes sense. <laughs> and that this video is still easy to follow. 
down with white supremacy and colorism. Um, if somebody tries to date you just because you're lighter skin or because of futurism or because you're and or excited, please run girl because that advantage does not last um, long. There is some self-hatred that that's coming from and it's going to eventually like bleed onto you. So don't do it. Um, and if you're a black man, listen to this, please do better and don't uplift just light skin slash exotics just because they are such yeah just do better i want everybody to do better and that is also including myself <laughs>So that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you love watching people paint and talk about stuff, then my channel is the channel for you. Please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell notification thing. I don't have a set schedule. I try to aim to have stuff published on the weekends, um, but I don't always make it there. Hope you really enjoyed this if you like how this turned out again i might make this into a sticker so thank you again bye